My name is Tim Shields and I'm the founder of PhotographyAcademy.com. So there's a problem and we're going to find a solution to this problem here in this video. So we have an email list of 45,000 photographers and they're from all over the world. And the problem is that the photographers on the email list are not engaging with the photo community that lives within our Facebook group. So we came up with this idea. Let's create a short term, kind of like a flash photo contest and let's ask all of the photographers who are on that email list to submit their best photo into the Facebook group and we'll have a prize and that prize is the top 10 photos from this photo contest will be profiled in a video and the video will be sent out to all 45,000 photographers. It'll be posted on YouTube, it'll be posted on Facebook and you'll get some really cool recognition. So I created this post three hours ago and this was the last chance reminder to post your best picture really good response so far. If we take a look at all the new photos within the group, I can see that there are some really nice high quality photos that have been submitted so far. So judging here is going to be very difficult. So Photography Academy is more than just me. We actually have a really fantastic team. We have Fernando who is holding the camera right now and he is our video editor. In fact, this video you're watching right now was edited by Fernando. Buenos dias, uh, my name is Fernando and I make awesome videos. Then we have Michael who is in Florida and he looks after our advertising on Facebook. So there are people out there who just want the solution and then there are people out there who want to be unique in their photography. We have Lauren also in Florida. Hey Tim, we actually we just got a message on Facebook and she takes care of our customer service. She answers our emails that come in. We get about 100 emails per day. And we have Shamira in Bangladesh, and she is the moderator for our two Instagram accounts. And we have Rena, who is in Australia, and she looks after our Google and YouTube ads. So we've got a team of six people and we have a very clear mandate for the team. The mandate is that we help people to become award-winning photographers through the Photography Transformation 4-Step System. With that mandate in mind, we want to be able to help photographers to become award-winning photographers. And that may just mean you want to take better photos. Or to some other people it means, yeah, I want to submit my photos to photo contests and actually win awards. But whatever your goals really are, we are here to try and help photographers become better and take photos that they're really proud of. So we got this idea for a photo contest. It's going to be short notice. It's going to be free to enter. It's going to be really easy to enter. We're not going to make it complicated with a bunch of rules. Really the only rule is you can post two photos. They should be your two best photos. And we're looking for any kind of an outdoor shot. Oh, look at this nice one from Hobby Sons. That is just beautiful. It's from the coast of Spain. We're not looking for baby photos. We're not looking for wedding photos. We're not looking for portraits, but outdoor, travel, landscape, cityscape, macro. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. Beautiful. To enter this contest, we just ask people to join our Facebook group and create a post and post your best photos. So we have 67 people who now want to join the group. Here we are, approve all. There we go. Use a hashtag, my best pick. Let's take a look at some of the photos right now. Yeah, look at that one, that's beautiful. So this one is from George St. Giroux and he is like the king of Towers Bridge in London. It's like he's become the localized London expert for Tower Bridge photos. We have 18 hours to go until the deadline for submission and in looking at the photos so far, I have one word, it is wow. There are some amazing, stunning photos that have been submitted so far and it's going to be really, really difficult to hone down the list to just 10. So let's do it. The deadline is now over and everyone has submitted their photos. There's like hundreds and hundreds of submissions and I am completely blown away by how beautiful some of these photos are and also just the locations around the world where the photos are coming in from. Like I've got this one here from Sweden, from Alaska, from Chile, Slovenia, India, Kenya, Vancouver Island, Canada, Italy, Indonesia, Colorado, Hawaii, Dubai, USA, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, like just literally from all over the world. I am completely so impressed by how awesome you guys are. These photos are so high quality. I love the simplicity of this one. I love the fact it's just a two color photo. You've kind of got the blues and then you've got the orange yellow tones and it just makes those leaves pop right off the screen. 
So this is really gonna be a difficult job to narrow down hundreds of photos to just a top 10 because the quality of work overall is exceptional. I'm so impressed. But it actually makes me really, really happy to see this level of quality with this photography. We're done, we're ready to go. There were 1,000 photos actually that were entered. It took about four hours to go through them and I've got the thing whittled down to, it's not a top 10, it's a top 11. There were some really tough decisions to be made. Let's jump right into it and go with photo number 11. And we are live. Welcome everybody who is joining us on Facebook as well as on YouTube at the same time. So you just saw a video that profiled how this photography contest came about and part of the decision-making process that we went through in order to whittle down this list from a thousand photos down to just 11 ultimately. So I am now going to reveal the winning photos and I'm going to share my screen. So let's jump into it right now. And here we are. Number 11 is from Lori Kiosnas. And this sunflower photo is a real beauty because she's got that sun flare coming from behind the petals on a sunflower, different light and different color in the sky. There's one clear main subject here on the left third. We've got some really nice background over on the right third, right center right. Uh, we've got foreground, middle ground and background. Beautiful photo. Um, it, it had to be included in the top 10. Next one is this minimalist photo from Terry Martin. And this one is very special because we have essentially one color tone that's going on. And that's really important for photos because oftentimes photos can have just too many colors and they get too busy with uh, the color palette. This one doesn't have that problem. Also, we know exactly what to look at. We know what the main subject is, this tree. It's on the right third. There is foreground, middle ground, background. It's a simple photo. And this is the type of photo that wins photography awards. That's number 10. Number nine is from Alan Chardon. And this is a very beautiful photo. I can't make up my mind if it's a composite or not. I'm thinking that those black swans were dropped in with Photoshop because I don't see any little uh, waves or there's no wake behind them as they move. Whatever the case, this is a beautiful photo. There's a certain amount of mystique to it and a mood that's created. It's simple and uh, it's a photo like I've never seen before and that's why it's included in the top 10. Really well done, Elaine. Number eight is from Maxud MK and this is K2. Uh, it looks like he was on a, a K2 trek in 2018. I love the mood in this photo. I love seeing the, uh, the light coming off to the right and the moodiness of having clouds near the top. We've got really bright areas. We've got very dark areas. So there's a lot of contrast going on inside the photo. And this, this is like a wallpaper type of photography. This would be great for a magazine cover. It, it is a, a really special photo. Number seven from Brian Hogaboom. And this one is from the Outer Banks in North Carolina. Wow, what a photo. Look at the leading lines that are coming in from every angle, foreground right to the center of the photo. And everything is pointing towards the sun. It is a very unique photo. We've got all of this warmth in the center and then sort of some cold blue tones up in the top of the sky. So we have a variation and contrast just in color tones and temperature overall. Really beautiful photo as well. Uh, we've got the one big diagonal leading line that leads us from the top left down to the bottom right. Really well done. Number six is from Bev Hamilton. Would you look at this photo? This is the prairies of Canada in the province of Saskatchewan. And this is a Canadian national train. And the drama that is going on in this photo is absolutely outstanding. I'm thinking that Bev did some really creative 
editing in the sky and the clouds in order to bring out those colors, those sort of orangey reddish tones going into a dark, dark navy blue up at the top. I never thought I would ever be selecting a photo of a train to be in the top 10 here, but yet here I am. Absolutely amazing photo. The, the placement of the locomotive is just perfect. It's on the right third. This is the main subject of the photo right here. The lights on the front just look great. Really beautiful photo. So well done, Pev. Photo number five is from Ben Bailey, and this is from Brisbane, Australia. Would you look at this sky? Like absolutely outstanding. So this was a morning sunrise, and uh, I chose this photo just because of the amazing sky and amazing colors that are going on here. We've got a nice leading line going right down the middle of the pier. Looks absolutely beautiful. There's nothing uh, cluttering up the photo. We don't have a whole bunch of people in the middle of the pier, which just proves that the best time to shoot these types of photos is uh, sunrise as opposed to sunset, when I'm sure this place would just be full of people. So beautiful shot, Ben. So we are down to number four, and this one is from Andre Aptemeyer. What I really love about this one is great choice in making this a black and white photo. I love the leading lines going from the bottom of the photo right up to the top. We have a clear main subject, which is this little girl. And I like the fact that with the post-processing, the little girl has been lit up. So the eye is drawn to her. I also really like with the post-processing that you'll notice that Andre darkened the right side, darkened the top, darkened the left side, darkened the bottom. So everything is dark around all the outside edges and just the center of the photo has the brightest part uh, with a really gradual feather so that you don't notice it so much. So beautiful job on this one, Andre. We're down to number three. And number three is from Wendy Klein. And she took this uh, photo on the beach in Australia. It's a super unique photo. It's kind of like the Mesa Arch of Australia. It's a log. She found this hole through it. It creates a frame. She has a beautiful, it's either a sunrise or a sunset, probably a sunrise knowing her. She gets up early all the time. And this is just a stunner of a photo. I absolutely love the framing here. There's a clear main subject and it's using the natural landscape that she found in order to find something that's beautiful. And this is something that's actually really important. There's so many photographers who think and they say, oh, I don't have anything interesting to photograph near my house. There's nothing interesting there, but not true. You can find opportunities like this wherever you are look for the leading lines, look for the framing, look for the reflections, and you're going to be able to find great compositions. We're down to photo number two, and this one is from Al Martin. Would you look at this? This is a macro, and he's got this so that the petals on this flower look like they're burning. It looks like flame. This is a 10 out of 10 photo. I'm in awe of this photo. I didn't think I would be choosing a macro in the top three, but here I am, and I love the sharpness of this. He probably did photo, or sorry, focus stacking for this photo in order to get everything in focus and yet have it so sharp. Beautiful. I'm speechless. It's wow. So we're down to the number one. And what is the number one going to be? A big sunset, a big landscape, a big mountain? No. It is, surprise of all surprises, a black and white. And I never thought I would be choosing a black and white as number one, but the originality of this photo is so unique and so one in a million that I had to choose it as the number one photo. What I love about the photo is that there is a clear main subject, which is the main elephant who is on the left one third using the rule of thirds. And then we've got this group of five other elephants over on the right. Uh, creating the right third, and that's our background in the photo. Uh, we've got God rays coming down from the sun that is in the clouds. Ugh, the mood and the overall feeling of this photo is fine art. Like this, this is magazine quality work, and it should be displayed somewhere. And uh, if I had any 
suggestion for it. If uh, Stan wanted to do something else to the photo, I would say to drop it into Photoshop and clone out these little legs right here and just uh, clone in the grass instead. And maybe this trunk right here that's in the middle. Other than that, it's just such a fantastic photo. I'm, I'm really taken with the beauty of this, the uniqueness, the level of difficulty in being able to find a composition like this, as well as getting to a place like this where you have the opportunity to take pictures of elephants. Absolutely beautiful stand, so well done. Now, to all of you who submitted photos, like the other 989 photographers who didn't have their photo uh, highlighted in the top 11 here, so many of your photos were absolutely outstanding and in order to keep this video to some sort of a, a, a short length, I, I had to make some really tough calls. There were so many photos that really should have been in the top 10, but I had to come up with the top 10 and <laughs> funny enough, it ended up being a top 11. So keep up the good work. Keep using those principles of composition because composition, it's the cornerstone, the foundation of every good photo. And I'm talking about using the rule of thirds and leading lines, reflections, framing, minimalism, and combining them wherever possible all together. And let's not forget balance and symmetry, of course, my favorite, but combining them so that you are using as many rules as possible in the same photo. And that's how you're going to come up with some of your best work. So you just saw award-winning photography right in front of your eyes. Now, if you want to be able to take your own award-winning photography, then you need to check out the Photography Transformation four-step system. This is our flagship masterclass product and that four-step system is number one, how to be in the right place at the right time so that you always get the amazing light. Number two, how to find amazing compositions no matter where you are and compositions as I said are the foundation of every great photo. Number three, how to use very very simple camera settings so that your photos will be tack sharp from the front all the way through to the back. And number four is how to create drama with your post processing so that you can create photos like the ones that you just saw right here. So I'm going to show you a very quick two minute movie trailer of what's inside the Photography Transformation Masterclass. I want to welcome you to the Tim Shields Landscape Photography Transformation Masterclass. This is lesson one. You need to know when should you go there, what time of the year, what time does the sun rise, what time does the sun set, these are where the photographers would stand. What this shows us is the direction of sunrise and sunset. Welcome to class number two. This class is all about compositions. This is actually a very difficult location to find a good landscape photo composition. So this is my final setup. The sky is getting a lot darker now. It really pays off to take the time to walk around and not just settle for the first setup that you find. Welcome to your class on camera settings. Even though there are probably 100 different menu options on the back of this camera, there are only three that really matter. And now my autofocus has focused exactly on that dead leaf. So what I want to do is find something that is double that distance. Welcome to class number four on post-processing. One secret weapon, it is the brush tool. Look at the color tone that I've now got. Welcome to class number five. It is time to print your piece of fine art. There is the print that's printed on a metallic paper using a very high resolution printer. Then behind the paper is a sheet of aluminum and then in front of the paper is a clear plastic also known as acrylic. It creates a beautiful finished image. Welcome to class number six. This class is all about the promotion of your work as a photographer. It's important to have your body of work in one central location. And this is extremely important. This masterclass is not just information, it's your photography transformation. I'm also including a bundle offer of my best selling photography tools and courses, including the presets and profiles post processing bundle, the photography jumpstart bundle, photography the easy way bundle, and the photography from start to finish bundle. Let's start now. Click the button now and join me for your photography transformation. 
So if you want to check out the Photography Transformation 4-Step System Masterclass, I'm going to drop a link down below so you can check it out. If you don't have time now, you can visit later. Just go to photographyacademy.com, photographyacademy.com, anytime you can check it out. Thanks so much for submitting your photos. Thanks for being here live. We have, uh, in the combination of Facebook and YouTube, we have thousands of people who have seen your photos so far. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. There are some photographers who believe that to be a great photographer, you need to have your camera in manual mode all the time. And to that, I say no. You keep your camera in manual mode all the time and you're going to miss those moments and then they're gone forever. I was hosting a workshop in the Camargue and these beautiful horses were galloping closer and closer to us and some of the photographers missed out on those moments because they were fiddling with their camera settings. You need to let your camera do the heavy lifting for you so that you can do what you do best which is find the beauty amongst all that noise. Landscape photography requires a quick ability to change your mindset because you don't control the light, God controls the light. I was in the lavender fields and I wanted a sunset, but what I got was storm clouds and lightning. So I set up to capture that and the photo is probably my favorite all time. Landscape photography has this way of being able to reach into your heart and say, put your busy life on hold and come with me. We have beauty to capture. And that's what photography is. It's about capturing beauty and creating your own art. My wife had just recovered from a life-threatening surgery and we were in the middle of nowhere on the edge of the Grand Canyon. It was sunrise, I was photographing down into the canyon and I looked up and there she was right at the top, silhouetted and bam, I got the shot. I love that photo because it's so reminiscent of her journey at that time and our journey together and that to me is what photography is all about. It's, it's about capturing our journey through our lives and capturing those moments that mean so much to us. Photography is about storytelling and when I'm out there shooting, I'm always looking to find a hero and often it's those small heroes that make the best stories through photography. There are no natural born photographers it must be learned and you need to choose someone who you're going to learn it from. My name is Tim Shields. I help people become award-winning photographers and I can help you.